we experience a lot of problems in our workplace. You know, there's always issues that need to be addressed. And so whenever we're talking about a topic with that we're passionate about fixing, we have to be able to talk about it in such a way that we provide an argument for why that's important. Why is this topic what we need to focus on in our workplace so that we can fix it and move on to something else? So a problem statement is an important pr um, process of developing an evidence-based practice um, question and getting other people on board. It's an argument for why is this topic important. Now, something to note, every article you read, every research study that you read about has a problem statement within the article, the published article. It's typically in the introduction of the article and typically going to start at the very beginning of the study and tell you about the background of the topic and why is this topic important. One of the assignments you will be doing in this module is to actually create your own problem statement. You need to be able to talk about why is a topic so important that you should be invested in it to do an evidence-based practice project about it. So this is an example of kind of the key components that you see in every article you look at. Well, kind of. Um, every article or every study or e every EBP pro project starts with a topic, just some general broad topic. That's what you should pro are probably already thinking about. You know, what is a topic in your workplace that you've experienced that may be problematic that you would like to know more about? That's a general topic. Now you take that topic and you narrow it down more specifically into the problem, the problem statement. So this is a very brief example of a problem statement that nausea and vomiting are very common side effects for patients who are receiving chemotherapy. And so though we also have had interventions in the past that we've tried and they've been somewhat successful in reducing nausea and vomiting. However, perhaps there are better interventions out there that can prevent those side effects and not just manage them after they occur. And so we need to figure out what those are so we can implement them in our practice and really help our patients improve their quality of life. That's a problem statement. I provided you with an argument of what the topic is and why is it important. Um, then after you have argued for the importance of the topic, then you have a purpose statement. The purpose statement tells us exactly what we hope to learn. So why are we doing this research study? Or why are we doing this evidence-based practice project? So the purpose of this study is to X, Y, Z. Then we have a research question, PICO question, PO question. It's written in a format that tells us exactly what we want to know the answer to. And then lastly, if it's a quantitative study, we'll have some kind of hypothesis or maybe more than one hypothesis that tells us what we think the answer to our research question is going to be. Okay, we're not actually going to be creating hypotheses in this class. That would be more, more so for a research study. So these are some of the common things that you see in a problem statement. Remember, when you hear the word problem statement, you should be thinking of an argument or kind of like a persuasive speech where you're passionately telling why is this topic important and why do we need to do a project centered on this topic. So first of all, kind of think of this like an S bar. So we have to identify what's wrong. So we have an issue. Okay? We know that a lot of cancer patients who are receiving chemotherapy have nausea and vomiting. That's a very common thing. Then we give a little bit more background. We could give some um, statistics maybe. We could talk about how dangerous nausea and vomiting is for patients who are already immunocompromised and have poor nutrition and anorexia associated with their medications. Um, scope is when we really bring in the statistics. We talk about how big this problem is. You know, 2.2 million people every year um, suffer from chemo-induced nausea and vomiting. Totally just made up those numbers, but you get the gist. We have to talk about how sizable and this, the magnitude of this problem is, because obviously if more people are impacted by this problem, then that's a pretty good argument for the need to fix the problem. Consequences. If we don't do anything about this problem, it's going to spiral out of control. These are the things that could happen if we just continue to turn a blind eye to this problem and we don't do anything to try to fix it. Okay. 
knowledge gaps, that's pretty common. You see knowledge gaps a lot in research literature that you read. Basically, they say, you know, Jones has done a study about chemo-induced nausea and vomiting. They looked at this specific population, maybe prostate cancer, and only men over the age of 50. So we have this gap because nobody's really studied women with BRCA positive breast cancer. So where is the gap? Okay, if we already know the answer to the problem, then we don't need to solve the problem. So clearly there is a gap out there in our knowledge that we need to do a study on to figure, to fill in the gap. And then sometimes you'll see a proposed solution. So sometimes they'll say, you know, this study pro will propose, seeks to find an intervention that will help to prevent nausea and vomiting from happening in the first place, rather than waiting until it happens and then treating it. This is an example. Um, again, remember the problem statement is typically in the introduction, the first little part of a research study. And um, I kind of highlighted this. I got a little crazy because I like to highlight when I'm reading. So I copied this as a screenshot from one of the studies that I was looking at. But basically this was about the use of antibiotics during pregnancy and how that can lead to actually postpartum depression symptoms, according to these researchers. So they said these are kind of some of the other studies that have been done in the last 10 years. There's been evidence out there that's looked at how bad the antibiotic use can be on the microbiome in general, um, and not just for pregnant women, but for, women, for people across the lifespan. Also, they talk about the gut biome and the brain and how there's issues with potential links between antibiotic exposure during pregnancy and postpartum depression, depression symptoms. And so then they talk about, you know, we've never really looked at this before. That's your knowledge gap. The risk of postpartum depressive symptoms developing in association with antibiotic exposure has not been looked at. And so they've spent this whole time telling you how important an issue this is, and nobody studied it, hence. I'm about to study it. So that's a pretty good argument for why we need to do some research about this. So you need to be able to articulate why something is so important. And I'm gonna go back a, couple, a slide and say that when you construct a problem statement, you should try to include as many of these things as possible because that packs a bigger punch and lets the reader know, hey, okay, they're on to something. This is a big problem and we really, really do need to solve it. And so I'm invested and I want to read what you've written. So that's your problem statement in a nutshell. Try to include as many of these things as possible while you passionately talk about why a problem needs to be solved.